Hey there everyone. This month's portrait is a fairly quick one because uh, I've had a lot of commissions I've been working on lately. However, I did want to make a quick tutorial to go along with it to talk about the brushes I used in this one. I actually, I made these brushes for my Photoshop brushes website several years ago, but the brush that I used predominantly in this piece, I made for a kind of a different purpose than for what I used it for here. So it was sort of revelatory for me. Anyway, it helped to create this beautiful skin texture. So the brush set that I'll be talking about, you can find a link to in the description of this video. I don't do a lot of overlap with my artwork in Photoshop brushes, but since I used this brush so much in this piece, I thought I'd do it this time. Uh, by the way, the brushes are free to download and to try out and play with, but make sure you buy a license if you're going to use them anywhere where you can't credit my website. That's all in the terms of use. You'll find it when you get there. So given that this portrait is pretty close up, I wanted to make sure the skin was a bit more textured. I've used the blenders in my skin textures brush set many times before, and I used it here initially as well. Um, Blender 1 is the brush set that I use most, but really they all do slight variations on the same thing, so you could use any of them. I blocked out some basic shapes of colors, as you saw, and then I used the blender to really blend them together. It looks muddy and crazy fake at this point, but it gets the basic shape of the face down nicely for me to then go in and the paint the uh, details on top of. So I do some refining of colors and adding a bit more blues and purples into the highlights. And eventually I start blending with the brush that I'm talking about, which is called Scattered Single. And I'd originally made that brush to do slight highlights on the skin here and there. What it does is it scatters a little circle of color sporadically and changes the size of it and stuff. So it's great for little tiny highlights like the tip of the nose or right around the eyes. Um, but it apparently works crazy well also for both blending and painting too. So I start out just kind of blending with it a little bit. I don't even remember what got me started, but I found out that it was working pretty well. Um, and when I say blending, by the way, I'm using the smudge tool with that brush set to use for the smudge tool. Um, just to the right of where you choose your brush, you can also indicate, uh, change the strength up and down, and it's a percentage. The more higher percentage, uh, the more blending you're doing. So if I painted and I wanted to just barely blend some stuff together, I would move that strength percentage down to like 25 or so, and then do just a little tiny bit of blending there. Um, so it keeps, if you keep it low like that, then it keeps the texture um, more. <laughs> yeah, it keeps the texture more. Okay, so it will retain more texture is what I'm trying to say. Uh, and it will create more texture. Whereas if you use it on the high end in those, you know, 70, 80, 90, 95 percentage range, ranges, it's just gonna blur it together and really make it blobby and soft and kind of muddy. So you can use those high percentages at first when you're first painting if you'd like, but then when you start refining, you're going to want to lower that percentage. Um, or get away from the blend tool altogether, which would be also fine. Just use the same brush for painting at a low opacity and use the color picker to get stuff around it and blend colors that way. I eventually get to a point where I do that, but I do a lot of blending first. So I'll use the blending. Um, I do basic blobs of shapes, right, with colors, and then blend it, and then do it again, and then blend it. And when I'm doing this, I'm refining and creating the shape of her face to match what I want in my head. Um, then once I get that shape, I will change over from the blender and do almost completely at that point the brush tool. And I was using that same brush, the Scattered Single, um, and just use it on a low opacity. And then use the eyedropper tool as a color picker to grab colors around it and to slowly blend those two colors together. And that will keep a lot of the muddiness out of your painting uh, as well as to help to create texture when you're using a brush like this. And it worked really well for me here. 
Um, another thing I want to touch on is the random colors that you'll see me adding on these towards the end of the painting, which I'm not sure I've touched on before. Uh, this step is easily one of the most important things to help add realism to your painting, and there's different ways to achieve it, but this is how I do it with skin. Light and color are really intricate. If you go in and add the exact same color highlights all over the skin on, the, on your portrait or on a rock or whatever it is you're painting really, it's going to look fake. The details may be great and all, but there will always be something slightly off about it. Until that is, you add that slight color variance. Colors refracting in the atmosphere or reflecting off stuff around that object will add minor variances to the colors on that object. Uh, we can get into this more at a later date, but needless to say, this stuff goes right alongside that randomness is beautiful mantra that I think I covered in an earlier video. Maybe not quite as such. Uh, on a new layer above the others, I'll add in those random colors. What colors and where are up to your personal discretion, and pretty much anything you choose will help the look, but uh, certain colors can definitely complement certain skin tones better than others. I think I usually do greens, blues, magentas, uh, and sometimes a bit more oranges. Oh, and cyan. Anyway, play around with it. Make that new layer so that its blending mode is overlay, which is near the top of the layers palette, and set it to a really low opacity. Some colors may need a lower opacity than others, in fact, so you could even do each layer or each color on its own layer. Uh, then play around with that opacity until you can just barely see the hint of that color, but so that it's not overpowering. If overlay doesn't look right as a layer style, uh, play with the various layer blending modes until you can find one that does. I think that's about all I wanted to cover this time. Um, so thanks for watching and Tune in next time for more crazy, okay, not really crazy. Well, the art's not crazy. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Tune in next time for more digital art tutorials and time-lapse videos and just really kind of all-around cool stuff from <laughs> Stephanie Shimertla. Bye, guys.